Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us on this cold night. Um, you know, to, you all came to learn more about the home care's organizing efforts um, and the campaign to end the inhumane 24-hour workday. Um, before we get started, I just uh, want to mention the screening is being hosted by the Anti Women Campaign, uh, which is made up of uh, Chinese Staff and Workers Association. Um, uh, Flushing Workers Center, National Mobilization Against Sweatshops, National Organization for Women, NYC, uh, New York City uh, DSA, Socialist Feminist, and the Disability Education and Advocacy Network up in Buffalo. Uh, for tonight's screening, there is an additional sponsor uh, that I want to acknowledge, the Domestic Workers United. Um, our panelists will go into more detail um, after, but just briefly I want to mention that um, the NIO Women Campaign unites workers from all different backgrounds to fight for the control over our time. Um, over a hundred years ago, we had a vibrant movement of workers demanding the eight-hour workday uh, because workers saw that it wasn't enough to simply be uh, compensated for our labor, but that for a democratic society, workers needed times for themselves, for their families, for their communities, and time to organize so we could even um, make, win bigger gains. Um, today, these demands are uh, embodied by our campaign and being led by home care workers. Uh, so without further ado, uh, oh actually, there is more ado. <laughs> um, does everyone have um, translation sets who need? For Spanish, you should be tuned into number two. And for Chinese, it's eight. So, um, as you all know, International Working Women's Day is just a few days away, and appropriately we um, are also kind of commemorating that and um, as a campaign that, you know, is led by working women. Um, we have a lot of working women, not just home attendants, but office workers, you know, mothers, caretakers um, in different fields, all gonna, who are going to be speaking and giving you more background information on the campaign and um, yeah, just, uh, so we're gonna start with, I'm actually just gonna introduce everyone and then you guys can just pass on the mic. Um, so we're gonna start with Lisa Ning is the film director. Um, and then, um, Noemi, who is the home attendant, and she'll be translated by Yanine Pena. And then Jean Bukaria from um, Now NYC. Um, Mika Nagasaki from Chinese Staff and Workers Association and Leona Raji from um, DSA. Hello everyone. Um, thank you for uh, coming uh, and, and see the film. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I want to give uh, a special recognition uh, to the, uh, the protagonist of the, uh, this film who is also here tonight in the audience stand, uh, Lai Yi. That's, uh, She, she has to leave uh, tonight uh, early because she has to go back to work, uh, but she has been a great inspiration uh, of, uh, of this film, of this project, and, um, and um, her and many other uh, home attendants who, who uh, came out, uh, and they are the ones who uh, make this film happen. And um, I can you know, say a little bit about how this project happened and then what, you know, what it means. Uh, and I started uh, more than two years ago uh, as um, uh, home attendants uh, like Lai Yi uh, started to come up uh, with uh, uh, lawsuits uh, that's mentioned in the film. Uh, and uh, they, they come out and then they also realize that uh, it's necessary to um, unite with other home attendants you know, from uh, different agencies because this kind of uh, 24 hour shift uh, happen, you know, not only in her agency but others. Uh, and uh, in order to really win the fight, they need to, um, uh, you know, contact other 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 home home, home attendants too. And uh, as you can see in the film, uh, the the working environment is very isolated. You know, they, they stay with their patients uh, all the time. So actually, it, it's it's uh, not as easy as you know when you organize in a factory. You know, where you, you see the, your fellow coworkers every day. Uh, but it, it is in such a um, difficult environment that uh, she was able to uh, bring in more than uh, 100 home attendants uh, from, uh, from CPC and that's how they started the lawsuit and, and, they, and they encourage um, other home care workers uh, uh, to come out. So 
uh, throughout the, 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 the lawsuit, there's you know a lot of difficulties back and forth, and then there's some you know victories as you can see the film, and then there's uh, 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 the the state government you know come out and came out and tried to uh, legalize the 24-hour shift, and uh, it was at that time that uh, really energized a lot of uh, home attendants because there was a hearing uh, last year uh, last summer. And uh, and at that time, the uh, many home attendants uh, really, you know, they, they they felt strongly about about you know putting out their stories. Uh, so so that was that really like pushed the project forward. So it was in last summer that we did uh, a lot of uh, uh, filming, and then that, that ended up you know uh, what what you see today, and uh, and other people can talk about you know uh, what happened since then. Um, but this project. Um, it started when I when I uh, first uh, not long after I, I got involved with the organizing work uh, in Chinese Staff and Workers Association, um, and um, and really it uh, speaks to uh, many of us who who just uh, came out of college uh, and uh, start you know start working uh, because like the long hours, low pay, you know that's that that exists you know uh, across industries you know like even if, if you work in an office you know you still to work you know many many hours um, a week and um, and we actually getting poorer you know this is our generation you know uh, uh, actually poorer uh, and um, and and the, the home attendance rule really really set an example you know how you know in such extreme condition they, they're able to um, you know uh, stand up you know they're able to come together that really an inspir inspiration you know for for all of us you know especially uh, young people you know uh, like, like myself and uh, so, so ended up, you know, when I make after I make this project, I, I learn uh, much, you know, much more, you know, from from them. Um, so, so I really want to, you know, uh, give special, you know, special recognition to Lai Yi and, and all other um, uh, home attendants who, who, you know, really, you know, their their the courage and their determination, you know, I think that really uh, inspires all. So I want to say thank you to them.
cuando nadie quería ir a reemplazarme, yo me estaba hasta 15 días, hasta que encontraran una persona que quisiera ir a, a reemplazar ese caso. Porque la mayoría de las veces, por el esfuerzo que se hace, nadie quiere ir a trabajar 24 horas. Y sabiendo que no nos pagan también, yo trabajé ese tiempo y trabajé 12, eran 12 horas que me pagaban de las 24. Podemos, nosotros sabemos que eso es un robo. Y cuando nos dicen a nosotros que no tenemos que, que podemos dormir, eso es imposible. Porque el hecho de trabajar 24 horas, hasta la misma palabra lo dice, 24 horas, que hay que estar pendiente de la paciente. Yo me uní con los compañeros para reclamar ese eh, para hacer un reclamo justo para que nos puedan pagar las 24 horas, porque es inaceptable que solo nos paguen 12 horas de las 24 horas. Entonces, por eso es que yo estoy aquí, con el propósito de unirnos con las compañeras. Yo estoy orgullosa de pertenecer a EMAS, porque es una organización que se preocupa por el bienestar de todos nosotros los que estamos siendo abusados laboralmente hablando. Eh, en el 2017 se hizo en el departamento de labor, se hizo una regulación de emergencia para bloquear una decisión del gobernador. Porque había, un, había, había habido una decisión, una, vimos una, tres decisiones de la Corte donde los jueces decidieron que se iban a pagar las 24 horas. Pero hubo una emergencia, como les vuelvo a repetir, de labores, donde hicieron una, hicieron una regulación de emergencia para bloquear esta decisión, donde se dijo de que no se tenía que pagar las 24 horas, porque nosotros dormimos. 24 horas. Entonces quiere decir de que como ser humano, ¿será que no, te, no tenemos ese derecho? Y en realidad en ese trabajo no lo tenemos. Eh, a raíz de esto, las agencias, un poco asustadas, digo yo, nos ordenaron, en muchas agencias se dio, de que entonces las personas que trabajamos con 24 horas, algo insólito, que ignoráramos a nuestros pacientes, que si no, no, ten, que, que no atendiéramos a nuestro paciente, con tal de que nosotros durmiéramos, otra cosa que es completamente absurdo, porque la responsabilidad de nosotros requiere de 24 horas. Si esa paciente se cae de la cama, teniendo nosotros orden por, por las agencias que no atendamos, a las personas en 24 horas, que, que solo sean las 12 horas. Entonces, a raíz de eso, nosotros queremos el apoyo, porque necesitamos saber que no estamos solos en esta lucha. Contamos con ustedes para que miren las injusticias ¿verdad? de las agencias, que ellos trabajan para su bienestar. Gracias por escucharme. my best because she spoke from her heart and I'm following the script. <laughs> so my name is Noemi Ariolo. I'm a, a NAS member. I worked as a home care worker for 15 years, 10 of which I worked 24 hour shifts, four days a week. I want to talk to you today about a great labor injustice that's being done. I work 24-hour shifts, and I don't sleep. It's a repetitive job that I do with love, and I turn the patient every two hours during the nighttime to ensure that their skin doesn't get any sores, If a patient is bedridden, you have to lift the patient with some kind of a 
a lift uh, into the wheelchair, which I do because I don't like seeing my patients bedridden all day. And, well, I don't remember all that, but that's mostly what I remember. I, you, I united with my fellow home care workers to demand all of our stolen pay to be paid 24 hours for 24 hour shifts. 24 hour pay for 24 hour shifts. This is an unacceptable practice that they pay you only half for the hours that you've worked. With all of our We've, with all of our struggles and, and fight, we saw three decisions in the court where the judges decided that if you work 24-hour shifts, you have to be paid for all 24 hours. We celebrated, but then the Department of Labor issued regulation, an emergency regulation to block these decisions. They said that you had to prove that you didn't sleep at night. And what are some of these agencies do? They told workers to ignore their patients during the nighttime, which is incredibly inhumane. That they're only going to pay us for the day hours. To ignore the patient after 9 o'clock. We can't ignore patients. We have to give them medication every hour, like in my case. We cannot ignore their conditions. This is our responsibility, our duty. Recently, we went to the New York State Court of Appeals and the judge said recently in court, why do firefighters get paid for all like they work 24 hour shifts, why do they get paid for all of the hours? R regardless of whether they answer a call to put out a fire. Why aren't home care workers paid the same way? They're on call. If a patient gets up during the night, they have to get up. Is it because we're women? Because we're immigrants, because we're women of color. We work hard because we need to work hard out of necessity. We do everything that's possible in our power for the well being of the patient. We should be paid for all 24 hours we work. The best thing for both patients and home care workers is to eliminate the 24-hour shifts, and, and split the shifts 12 and 12. It is better for all of us, our jobs, physically, emotionally, mentally. We can spend time with our families, rest, and we are able to give and provide the best care that our patients need. Unite with us and join us to keep fighting for a change. Say it again. Keep fighting for a change. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Jean Bucaria. I'm the deputy director of the National Organization for Women here in New York City. And um, we work, we've been proud partners to the anti-woman campaign for several years now. Um, involved in a couple of different campaigns, including this one. And uh, part of our work is, you know, we champion reproductive rights, we work for women's economic empowerment, and we work to end violence and discrimination against women. And I was asked to talk a little tonight just to put this into the broader context of, of what's happening nationally and across the state. Um, you know, as we look at the events coming being celebrated around the globe for International Women's Day, it's really important that we seize this moment to fight for justice for all workers. And that includes especially women, especially women of color, and especially immigrant women. 
And um, when you mentioned the firefighters, the very first thing to, that came to my mind was the fact that um, firefighters are mostly uh, male workforce and paid caregiving work is done by mostly a woman workforce. Across the country, uh, paid caregiving is made up of 89% of women. So although there needs to be justice for every worker, regardless of uh, their gender or their background, um, it is a woman's, it is primarily women's work. And as a result of that, um, we have seen the ways in which that work is underpaid and tremendously undervalued. Um, across the country, we're facing a very hostile climate. We're facing challenges to how we take care of and make decisions about our own bodies. Uh, in particular, immigrant women are facing challenges to just their ability to live their lives um, and feel safe and at home wherever they are. And women in general are facing um, sexual harassment and discrimination at work. So it's important that we really hear and put the voices, as, we, as we've seen tonight, of the individuals who are most impacted by what's happening, that they are given a platform to speak out for their rights, and that we work as allies together to secure change, um, whether that's fighting the government or continuing to tell these stories. So I'm glad to, to be here and um, be a part of this coalition to make sure that people that are just trying to ensure that, um, you know, first of all, it's healthcare, so it's essential, but also, you heard from the stories here tonight, just giving people dignity, allowing them to be in their own homes, and to not recognize the value of that is really problematic. So it's really important that we come together to make sure that we're caring for the people that um, care for others. So thank you for having me. My name is Mika Nagasaki, I'm a member of the Chinese Staff and Workers Association, which is one of the uh, sponsors with um, the other groups here of the Ain't I Woman campaign. Um, so the Ain't I Woman campaign, you know, sometimes I, I get some blank stares, you know, what, is, what, is, what does this mean? Are you saying anti-woman? Um, <laughs> no, we're not saying anti-woman. Um, it's actually a quote from Sojourner Truth. Um, you know, who saw a lot of women, white women, um, standing up for the right to vote and other rights um, and said, okay, I'm a woman, you know, I work really hard, um, you know, shouldn't I deserve the same respect? So the reason why, you know, this applies is that um, actually the campaign started in the 90s um, and it was led by a lot of uh, women of color. Um, in the garment industry and, and other industries, um, who were working and many times to, to sew and, and fabricate clothes and merchandise for brands like Donna Karen, you know, Kathy Lee. And these um, female CEOs were being lauded for, you know, they're feminists, you know, they're not letting the male system get them down, you know, they're going out and providing leadership. But what about the women who were paid less than you know, minimum wage to create the garments that you sell for $200 or $300. You know, aren't, aren't we also women? Um, and don't we deserve to see our families and don't we deserve to raise our families and, and also provide leadership in our society? You know, we need time to do that. Um, and so, you know, just echoing what Zishan said, is that these women are working 24 hours a day and yet they are still making the time to provide political leadership right now, you know, right here. Um, and so I think that's something that, you know, we really need to recognize and celebrate and we need to kind of talk more about that. Um, so specifically where did the Justice for Home Care campaign come in? Um, it's been something that's going on, right? You know, home care workers have been forced to work 24 hours um, for years and have been paid for half of the, the shift. Um, and so, you know, um, Specifically, Lai Yi, who uh, featured prominently in the video, she came forward to Chinese Staff of Workers Association um, around 2015 because she received a check, supposedly for overtime pay, um, 
and it was like $200 or something for 6,000 hours of overtime. Okay, so she was like, no, that's not right. Um, and she went to her HR, I mean her, um, she went to her company, obviously her agency, her employer, which is a nonprofit um, called you know, Chinese American Planning Association, uh, Planning Council. And you know, um, they told her one thing, she went to her union rep, and they told her another thing, she went to the Department of Labor, they told her another thing, and none of the things really made any sense. So she decided, you know, well, Chinese Staff and Workers Association is well known in the community as being a place that actually fights for workers' rights. <clears throat> and um, as Ishan said, she, you know, kind of used our space to uh, reach out to dozens and dozens of coworkers and, and it ended up being, you know, bringing in hundreds of workers um, in different agencies, different employees, not just her own um, agency. And um, as you saw in the video, you know, it's not just Chinese women, you know, also Alvaro is right here. Um, there are also workers from, you know, many different backgrounds. It is predominantly, though, uh, a female workforce, as was mentioned. Um, and so another thing that was mentioned is that, um, you know, kind of, I think the, the firefighter example is a really good example because it kind of illustrates the, the super exploitation. So, you know, workers are exploited, but then women of color, people of color, we face super exploitation. You know, there's, there's this, these other layers. Um, and, and so the a I Women campaign is a place for women workers to really take leadership to challenge that, but also unite um, not just women, you know, not just people of color, but all workers to fight for control of time. And so that's why we're calling for an end, actually, not just scaling back, not just to get paid for 24 hours, you know, not just to get money. Um, of course, you know, the stolen wages, do, you know, the workers deserve to get back the stolen wages. But we're not just calling for money, we're calling actually for an end to 24-hour shifts so that people can actually go home and recuperate and be a part of their own families and be a part of their own communities um, and speak out against, you know, racist and, and inhumane policies um, that are being passed, you know, currently. Um, and so I think I'm getting a signal I need to stop talking and I'll probably just take questions at the end. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Leona and I'm um, a campaign coordinator for the Socialist Feminist Working Group for DSA NYC. Um, I'm here to share why DSA is involved with this campaign and why we really believe this is a socialist feminist issue. But I wanted to start by sharing a little bit of my own story and why I feel really drawn to this campaign both as a worker and the daughter of workers who at one point both worked two jobs at the same time to financially support our family. Um, I think a lot of people can relate to working long hours and missing out on time that could be spent on their well-being. Whether we work in an office, in someone's home, or in a factory, um, that's really why I'm proud to be a part of a campaign that's led by workers, mostly women of color, to fight for control over our time. But I think what's really important about this campaign beyond the workers is the families of the workers and the people these home care attendants are taking care of. Um, I think these individuals stand to gain the most from a ban on 24-hour shifts. For the patients, having a home care worker that is rested and paid for all the hours they work can contribute to better care and greater safety. A lot of the workers in the documentary we just watched shared the way 24-hour shifts have impacted their relationships with their loved ones. I think about the time when I was younger and for most of the day my parents were working. I was stressed out about their health, they were stressed out about you know, their lack of time, and I felt like I really missed out on truly having a st stronger relationship with my parents who were working all the time. Um, I felt really guilty that they had to sacrifice their health to provide for me and my brother, and on top of it all, as we know, Workers in female-dominated fields like care work are enormously undervalued in our society. Um, this includes the uncompensated and invisible labor that people do every day, like caretaking, that are truly at the pillars of our society and 
you know, yeah, is something that our system is really greatly reliant on. Um, so my comrades and I at DSA, some of which are in the audience today, um, uh, and the other endorsers of this campaign wish for our society to operate on a different set of values. We envision a society where patients have access to the care that they need, and immigrant women of color are not exploited for the benefit of profit-driven entities like the agency bosses in the state. So let's talk more about the money. Um, as the documentary highlighted, a lot of the agencies have threatened cuts to care or even bankruptcy in the event that home care attendants are paid for all the hours they work. But at the same time, they're making record-breaking profits, $6 billion every quarter in 2017 alone. What the state and these companies are not talking about is how their th threats that the system will collapse it, um, is just a tactic to keep the status quo in place so that this form of wage theft can be made legal. The hard-earned labor of caretakers is being extracted under this scheme so that those at the top can profit off of patients' need for care. Who deserves to get compensated for the dignified care that these workers are providing? The state and these agencies or the workers? I'm pretty disgusted that in a so-called progressive state among a group of workers that are doing work that allows individuals to sustain their communities and have a higher quality of life we are neglecting and turning our backs on patients and workers. From one worker to another, I urge everyone in the audience to join the fight for control over our time and to end 24-hour shifts in New York State. Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna have some closing remarks and kind of how you can get involved with the campaign because I'm sure you're wondering, like, what can I do? Um, so, um, if you're part of a group or an organization and you'd like to become an endorser of this campaign, um, please feel free to come up to us and let us know. We'd also be happy to speak to your group and share campaign materials. If you're an individual, you can reach out about volunteering and organizing with our campaign and also raising awareness about our demands. Um, and then this Friday at 5 p.m., at Union Square, we'll be joining a coalition of groups around the city for a rally to celebrate International Women's Day. Um, and there's always donations. So we have a donation box on our table and uh, one of the laptops has like a PayPal um, form that you can also use if you'd like to make an online donation um, to show how interested you are in supporting our fight and struggle to end 24-hour shifts in New York State. So I'm going to pass it to Sarah, who's going to take any questions that you guys might have. But thank you guys again for sitting so patiently and hearing us out. <laughs> in here and I'm sure people are like getting tired but do we have any questions from the film or for any of the panelists? Uh, uh, you. Can you hear me? Yeah, great. Um, besides, in addition to the things that you've already mentioned in ways that people can contribute, thinking about the families that are benefiting, so for example my grandmother gets 24-hour care from multiple workers um, throughout the week. How can we, in addition to my family subsidizing their pay, how can, but that's just really like a, a little band-aid on a hemorrhage, right? How can we additionally support the workers that we're working with um, but to serve our families individually um, in this fight as we continue with the legal battle? Um, I think your question is how to support the individual workers um, that you meet. Uh, I think a lot of people know People who are in this industry, it's, it's a really growing industry because um, you know a lot of people are aging um, and a lot of people are choosing to stay in their homes, which is their right, um, actually. So um, and and also you know a lot of people have family in the industry as well. So um, you know one thing is to ask them about their conditions, ask them about the people that they know, you know, and, and ask them, you know, to, to um, consider, you know, joining us if, if they think that things need to change. Um, and, you know, um, 
en masse, it has a, a, the number is here, um, I can't remember it right now, but it's um, uh, open, you know, six days a week, Chinese <coughs> staff, it's also open six days a week. Um, but also, um, a lot of workers are already a part of other workers' organizations too, you know, and we really welcome um, those organizations to join and build the coalition because it really does need to be, I mean, I think, you know, what Leona was saying is that there's a lot of profit to be made in this system, and so that profit is also being used to really discourage um, kind of efforts to, to improve conditions. And so the only way to combat that, I mean, one of the things that, that um, we really run up against a lot from, you know, policymakers, from the system, is, is um, this, this kind of like, oh, the sky's going to fall down if workers actually get paid for every hour that they work, you know, because there's not enough money or whatever. And so, you know, it's patient versus worker a lot of the time. So it's really important for people who are receiving care um, to speak up and say, no, I really want my worker to be rested. You know, I really want um, my worker to be healthy and to be able to be um, you know, fully present. And you know, this isn't a zero-sum game. You know, actually, patients and workers or, or the elderly, anyone who's receiving the care, um, our interests are much more overlapping than the insurance companies want us to believe. So that is the way I think is that's the best way to really like support workers is if you are receiving the care to speak up um, and to spread the word. Any other questions? And could I just say, my name is Christine Lewis and I'm the Secretary of Domestic Workers United. Let me just say, we look at this screening this film today. If we aren't moved by this, well, I'm telling you, we will not be moved again. So if we who believe in freedom shall not rest until it comes, we must stand up. I say this to say, all this to say that there is nothing to lose. If, if the workers are compensated, it means that the patients are cared for in a dignified way. This thing is a conscionable thing. We understand why, you know, the New Deal, why women's work has been in this position it has been, and who's been subjected to giving care, not get paid for giving care. What I want to do right now, however, is implore every caregiver in the room to tell somebody, will this circle be un unbroken? We need every woman and man in this room to go hand in hand on this struggle. It's not me versus you, or you versus me. We're talking about reproductive labor. And let me just say this. As women of color, we're tired. We're sick and tired of being sick and tired. We're burning out. We're dying. We're literally dying on the jobs. Hello. We're dying on the jobs. Women are caring for, for, for elders. Women who are 95 year old and dying on the job. Literally dying on the job. It's, it's critical. It's important that we hold hand in hand. And not get too buggered down or too tired to go the distance. Listen, I cry. I cry. I cry in silence. I cry in the dark. I cry on purpose, I cry for a purpose, I cry for what this could be. Because my sisters and brothers, you all go to the agencies and you know, they steal your money, yet you work the longest. How long? How long? We who believe in freedom shall not rest until it comes. I cry for my sisters, I cry for me, and I cry for what this could be. Thank you. I appreciate your remarks, that was really inspiring. And I just wanted to add something. Um, a lot of these home care workers are actually becoming patients themselves. Yeah. We've noticed this. And home care work is one of the fastest growing fields and workforces. So um, 
it's just, yeah, unconscionable to me and I'm sure other people in this room that, you know, just the health consequences that this kind of work is having on the workers. Um, so I just wanted to add that kind of statistic. I think it's because there's a big divide between the what's considered skilled and what's not considered skilled. And home care is considered unskilled labor. It's undervalued. So I think that it's really important to unite for the control of time. Because if we just unite on the basis of wages, we have this sort of divide. Like we see, there are nurses like who are about to go on strike soon, um, who face the same problems. And I think it's really, I think this is, this is why this campaign is really important and we need to really join and, and fight to end long hours because this is what's killing us. It's, it's, it's literally killing us. <laughs> I think this is great. It's a shame. I, I look at it and then I'm looking at it in a light in which I see I work with parents who um use the court involved and they're going through a lot of stress and um very overwhelmed and frustrated at times. But I come across parents who um are trying to be caretakers for their own family members. And I know a few people who started their own business and trying to get women or men to be the caretaker for their family members who's sick. But I can see that as also being uh, um, unskilled, um, looked at as an unskilled trade or uh, issue. Like if this, if we're not fighting for this, then eventually those family members that are taking the initiative to take care of another family member for $15 an hour, $12 an hour, for 12-hour uh, shifts, can this can probably lead into them working 24 hours as well um, without it you being never minded, you know? So I appreciate that and the thought of um, just getting older you know, and um, having my children burdened or, you know, thinking about other people's children being burdened because of laws like this. Um, and they're not even realizing that they're getting themselves caught up in the system because if this is not working for you, then obviously that those positions of just being uh, loved ones and caring and wanting to take care of your family for so that you don't have a burden on yourself can end in you, your own health being at risk, and, you know? So I really appreciate this. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, I think the person behind you, and then you'll be the last. Oh, what you want it for. Okay. Um, I had a question. I totally appreciate all the information you provided, but um, my question is, did anyone look into um, and it's not going to solve the problem, but uh, I know they have one of the largest cooperative in home health care that's located in the Bronx. Um, and cooperatives are to empower people. Uh, they are not just employees, but they're involved in the organization. So I wanted to get someone's uh, response on the panel regarding that. Thank you. Um. I think it's called, oh gosh, what's it called? It's, it, it's actually the Cooperative of Home Care Associates, and they're located in the Bronx. Is that the one? I think we met We met with one co-op in the Bronx, or from the Bronx. They also have, I think, a, they, they have a think tank as well. Is that the one? So they, um, they, they were very helpful in, in kind of helping us to understand the system, because it's actually very convoluted, I think, in the video, there was all these layers of, you know, who, who's getting the, the Medicaid funds and how does it, 
go, you know, does any of it get to the worker? Um, and so they, they really helped us to kind of understand um, all of that stuff. And um, I know, I, I believe, well, I mean, you know, I, I, I think, though, that they're the only co-op, at least that, that we could find, um, that uh, specifically employs uh, home health workers. Um, but I, I, also, I also heard that they don't have 24-hour shifts. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, we, I, we definitely, you know, invited them to join the campaign to abolish 24-hour shifts, um, since they're able to figure out how to do it without, you know, how to care for, how to care for patients and uh, folks who, who require care, um, how to do it without the, the 24-hour shifts. And that's what we're, that's just what we're saying is, you know, all, all, um, everybody who needs the 24-hour shifts is because they really need the care. So, you know, it should be two different people, uh, one in the morning and one at night. It shouldn't be the same person burning, you know, the candle at both ends. Um, so, I'm not sure if that really responds to the question, but um, that was our experience. I can also, I, I just want to add something small. Um, I think for those, you know, I think you said it yourself, though, that not everyone can, can access that, right? Not everyone can work for the co-op, not everyone can get services from the co-op. And I think what we're trying to say here is we need to come together, not just even the home attendants, right, but workers from all different backgrounds, like anyone was saying, we're all facing this crunch, right? We're all facing this, you know, working longer and longer hours, having to care for our children, our, our, our elder, you know, how, do, how can we come together to fundamentally change something in our society so that everyone can access, right, the, 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 the jobs that provide, you know, allow us to have time, you know, and pay well and, and also receive that kind of care. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's, um, I would say that's the, um, uh, just to add to what Mika said. And then I think last, we only have time for, I think, one more comment. Um, I saw a hand up. Hello, um, my mom gets 24-7 care. Fortunately, we were able to get 12-12, um, which made a big difference. Uh, we had some nurses that in the middle of, uh, you know, around 11 or 12 at night would fall into a dead sleep that we couldn't get them out of. It was wow. terrifying. The first time it happened, we thought the woman uh, was dead. We couldn't wake her up. And it's because she had to work she, she wasn't working 24 hours with us, but she was working 12 hours in a nursing home, and then she was coming to our house. We were paying her at the time. And the, the possibility of endangering the patient is so high when the, the, the home health aid is exhausted beyond physical uh, ability to stay awake. It's just horrible. So we were able to do, uh, get my mother, luckily, the 12-12, and we found out we had to do something called the FIDA plan. I don't know if anybody's heard of this. It's a new uh, thing that the government is going to be forcing on or wants uh, uh, insurance companies to, uh, to take the lead on. And this, this is a combination of taking care of Medicaid and Medicare together for the patient to keep them at home. Think about this. The government doesn't have to pay a nursing home. It doesn't have to pay the rent or whatever, or the costs involved, the huge costs involved in keeping a person in a quote-unquote professional environment of care. So what they're trying to do is once they're trying to get as many people to be, stay at home with home health aides, mm -hmm. which is fine. I want my mother to be home. But I know the em enormous amount of money that they're going to save because my mother is not in a nursing home. And this is what they want the whole... Uh, country to be doing soon. So the reason they, they, they want to make this 24-hour legal is so they don't have to put the money back into the hands of the people that need it, that deserve it. So the money is there. Just think about that. All right, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs>
couple more hands, but in the interest of time, um, we're just going to end. But you know, people will be here. There's a lot of people who are already part of the campaign. I encourage people to come and talk to you. I'm sort of glad we ended on that note because I don't know if it's because it's like warm in here and it's like a screening and a panel. But when I watched the film, right, I, I'm sure like a lot of you, I was like pissed, right, um, <laughs> that people are working 20, you know, around the clock, days on end in 2019, right? It's 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 ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Even like, I mean, when I when I work on this campaign, sometimes I think it's. When I talk to people, I'm like, it's kind of ridiculous that we're even fighting this, right? Not only that they work around the clock, but they're not even paid for it, right? Paid for half of those things. But I hope, you know, we can go back to when we watch that film and, and, and um, you know, tap into that. And I really encourage people to, you know, sign up if you didn't sign up. Stay in touch with the campaign. This is a, a huge thing that's happening right now, right? New York State is trying to figure out how will it deal with you know, us, working people, right? It's, it's not someone else, it's us, right? And, you know, they can go away where they say, we continue to do this, where the only way the system will work that immigrant women and women of color do work for free at night, right? Or we can come together and say, no way, right? That's enough is enough, right? And, and say, we have to change the priorities of the system. Right, like, like you just said, there's money. There is money. There's so much money out there, right? We live in New York City, right? There, there's ways that we can make this happen. So, um, yeah, there's refreshments out there. Come speak to panelists. Come speak to other organizers. And come out on, on Friday for the Women's March. We'll be there with our banner. And stay in touch. Thank you.